Hi right, everyone and welcome back to the Morning Ramble. It's Friday, September 1st. I was looking at the astrology and we have some very interesting things that are coming up. Um, <clears throat> we the, Well, we know that we're in Mercury retrograde in the sign of Virgo. That's, well, what makes, Mercury is always going retrograde. So is what, what makes it important is that everything else that is happening with the other retrogrades and Pisces is what's make was making everything that is retrograde quite different. Saturn being in Pisces is making all the energies quite different. All of you most definitely are aware of that, especially with this um, full moon that we just had in the, in the sign of Pisces, which uh, we have a full moon every month, but it's everything else that is going on around it that makes the energy so potent. And with Saturn being in Pisces, it's most definitely the most important. Um, whenever you have a, a planet, such a, an energetic body, excuse me, such as Saturn doing something in a, in a sign such as Pisces, which is their 12th house, the end, and then you have all these retrogrades. It makes everything that under normal circumstances happen in astrology different. Like that, you can't just say, well, this is what is customary when we have this energetic commonality that is common, and, and this is the um, energetic law that um, corresponds to that. It's not really that. You have to look at the big picture of everything else that is going on and how it intertwines. Now, so what we have coming up, the most important is that um, we have, I, I'm pretty sure you all are brushing yourselves off after this, um, before I get into what we have coming up next, I'm pretty sure you all are brushing yourselves out, off after we had this full moon in the sign of Pisces. It most definitely packing a punch being the second full moon that we had in August and also with Saturn being there in Pisces. And then um, Mercury retrograde in Virgo, which is the opposite side of Pisces. And then all the other um, energetic bodies that we have retrograde is is been a lot to deal with like that. Very interesting um, climatic events that most definitely denote um, significant endings with Pisces. The 12th house, which is the end in astrology. Um, it means that there, so these were very significant endings connected to the past in a very um, deep and potent way. Scorpio showing up most definitely. Um, but so you almost definitely have been aware of that and what endings you're in. You that now you're going to go into the energy of breathing that sigh of release, a relief, excuse me, because of the release that the energy is going to give way the the impact of it and you'll be breathing a sigh of relief because these are releases that the soul you want at a subconscious level remember Pisces is the subconscious but with it being the last sign is all 12 of the signs subconscious subconscious is past life or the depth of the psyche subconscious even though scorpio re rules the psychology like that now so so um pisces is the subconscious past life energy but is not only that is that of all of the 12 signs in one like that okay so it, it, it connected you know in one like that in its wholeness in its completeness is pisces with the subconscious but meaning all of your past lives or um, there's the subconscious collective, even though it's a collective event, but it also is you as an individual, but it's collectively how everything is interconnected. Now, so is so so the energy of um, some of you because you may have it, it, those of you that are sensitive energy, you've been waiting for this. Okay, you were waiting for. Okay, that ending it was like dragged out of. Uh, okay, and then it's like and, and how the ending happened um, is connected to the, all those past lives, the subconscious energy, all of that. You're going to start the light at the end of the tunnel is about to happen. It's about to come through and you're going to be breathing. If it hasn't already, some of you, it could have already happened. Some of you, you could have been in that duality of the light and the, in the ending before we even had the full moon. It could have been like leading up to you and the light, the side of Billy being able to see, you know, but then also having to be connected with the ending. It could have been that duality of energy because these are things that you will have wanted to end. Now is um, 
So however it pl- however it played out, remember it's connected to past lives like that because that's Pisces is subconscious, the unseen like that. It goes deeper than what the three D um, representation of freedom means for you all. Now, so uh, there's about to be an energy of um, relief is gonna um, come in. Because remember with Scorpio showing up being a sister sign of, of Pisces, it was about the light shining in. Now that light, it, it doesn't have to relate to love the way it related with Scorpio. Now it could be whatever the light is like that. It's whatever is going to feel that whatever was taken out. Okay. That's the psychology past lives. The psychology that connects you to, to those states of conscious past lives. Now, the depth and the degree I'm getting is different for all of you. Octave. And I talk, started talking about octaves a few months ago and about octaves. But it is enough where light, Scorpio, psychology, what was pulled out, okay, it could be filled. Now, for, for some of you remember, um, Scorpio is a shaman. So it, for the, and we're talking about energetic vibration, Scorpio, the eighth house energy, death and rebirth, transformation, transmutation. Now, so some of you, it, it was happening automatically. Remember, we were talking, we've been talking about this since, um, since, um, um, March 7th when all this energy started to escalate or accelerate. So that what was happening. So it was being pulled out much to the light times. Remember, I was, remember, I had started saying with, with Saturn winning Pisces and then when, um, Saturn finished the seven year cycle the same day, I was saying they're pulling, the energies are pulling from much to the light time. That's how it always worked. When you're going through souls, going through evolution. That's why you can't really say, I'm working on this. That's you being overt with your healing, overt with your work. Okay, that's you kind of controlling it. You're not in alignment with the energy. Because when it's pulling from the energy, it's pulling from much to the lifetime. That's Pisces. That's the end. That's people that are old souls and the energy is like pulling from all those lifetimes. Like that is like pulling. And it's also because it's um, doing what I stated, psychic surgery, Scorpio, like that word is being extracted, the root of it, the root, the root like that. Um, and now that light and then the light can shine as it's pulling, then it shine, shine, shine. But here we're at the ultimate. We had that full moon in Pisces, not just because it was a full moon in Pisces, full moon in Pisces are common is the, is the energetic space because of everything that was go- else was going on astrologically like that now in the spiritual significance that um all of that um denotes is what was the difference the time and space that we are in we're in for this to happen now so pulling from all those other times that's pisces all the constants at once like that is not i'm in lifetime three and this is what i'm healing uh this i'm proactively um healing this uh this is what the issue is and this is what i'm healing that's when you're controlling you're overt you're not going along with the energy when you're going along with the energy the energy has a uh uh a um destination it has a map it has a plan it has the energetic vibration and i started talking about well when these energies come out and they're used up the door is closed i was stating it's like walking because the energy became very present march 7th i was talking about that in the videos in the tarot readings the energy becomes um on the youtube channel very present it's like we were i was picking up that we were using the energy and right behind us the portal was closing because these are times and spaces that we can't get back Cause we're going with the flow of the energy. It's not, I'm overtly working on this. This is my woundy. I'm overtly doing this. This is me healing my, not that. I'm talking about a different type of, you're connected with the energy and the energy has the plan and the map and you're like going with the flow of that in the intensity of it. And you're being true to the nature of what it is like that. So we've done that. Now, now there's the, a, um, um, some people have very significant releases, obviously. Obviously, there would be very significant releases. So it would be about... Um, it would be about that. So now is that light that could be... Um, that's at the end of the tunnel that could be um, put where that extraction happened like that. This would have been happening at an energetic level. When I'm speaking Scorpio, I'm talking about energy. 
I'm talking about energy. Remember, Scorpio is um, uh, ahead of us. Scorpio is ahead of us because it it is connected with the ethers in its design of its death and rebirth. Is the actual transformation? Is the transmutation? Is you being the phoenix rising like that? All of you with your soul contracts like that. So Scorpio obviously will be ahead of us, having those fillers out there connected to um, what is um, not accessible to other people. That's why um, Scorpio is looked at as shaman. Uh, Pluto, very healing, transformative energy is Pluto. Pluto is um, transformed now like that. So it would be, um, and it could be very shocking and awakening and sobering like that, but it was, it could have been, Pluto's energy gets that way when you've had the opportunity like that. And, and you, um, when you, when you, when you had the opportunity, even though Pluto is also processed because Scorpio is, is, is psychic surgery. Scorpio is the shaman. So Scorpio gets down deep into the psychology like that. Now, so, so it, that's why Scorpio can rise above their human interactions like that, but directly connect with their human interaction in the in, 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 in way for the healing to happen. But Scorpio is a very deep sign, meaning um, being true to the nature of the feelings and the thoughts, the psychology, that's the mental state and emotional state. Scorpio is the mental and emotional state energetically. Um, Scorpio is the is the psychology, the depth of the mind, the psychology. And Scorpio is also the depth of the emotion. That's why Pluto rules Scorpio. Transformation, death, the rebirth. Um, um, that's why it is um, the Phoenix, like that, is clearing, is transmutation, is Scorpio represents all of that. Now, so is so when I'm speaking Scorpio, I'm talking about the energy, not Scorpio people like that. So just like Mercury's in Virgo, we're not talking about Virgo people unless I say I'm talking about Virgo people. We're talking about the um, sixth house energy, Virgo the sixth house, that energy, the energy of that house. Now, so it would be, and then sometimes it's the people. And we'll say the people, just like Pisces, the full moon was in Pisces. It affected Pisces people, sun sign, rising sign people more. The rising sign ruler rules your whole chart, despite what your sun sign is. If your rising sign is in Pisces, Neptune rules your chart. How I'm a third in Cancer rising. Uh, my chart is ruled by Neptune and the moon, like that. Like that, but I have Neptune trying to send it Pluto sextile that. So it will be very transformative, potent, powerful, transformative transmutation of energy, like that. So it will be, and we're talking about the energy. Now, so that that's what happened. Now Pluto is so Pluto is very much a part of the eighth house. Is definitely a part of transformation. The three water signs, and we're getting off topic. The three water signs: Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and Vedic astrology are the most potent when we talk about souls growth and evolution. Cancer, Cancer is because Cancer is the youngest of the water signs. A lot of people that aren't really spiritual, they try to, make, because cancer represents the feminine energy, they try to make it all about cancer. Cancer is like the baby of the water signs, is the, is the youngest of the water signs. So it, so it would be, so in, in cancer as it relates to healing is about the past. It's about the past and that's what we're healing. Okay. But it's about the crab holding on to the past. That's why healing is difficult. That's what cancer means as it relates to souls growth and evolution. It's the energetic vibration, the moon, that holds on to the past. Because cancer is a crab holding on to the past. And that's what makes the past, that's what makes healing um, difficult. It could also be looked at as a holding space of the past, but not the way Pisces is. Pisces is the oldest of the water signs, probably the oldest of all signs, like that. So it, it is connected to the the, 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 the subconscious. Pa it has the past lives, so it's holding it different than cancer, like that. Is <laughs> where all if everything is in Pisces. The Akashic records, that's Pisces. Okay, you know that's the high priestess. 
So that that, that conscious records is all of your past lives like that. that your subconscious Pisces, all of your incarnations, all that connects everybody. Pisces has all of that like that. All of it. The exalted states of Pisces are not are, are, are not on earth like that. Where they hold it in the good, where they hold it, the Akasha records in the good in a high vibrational sense. They're not on earth. They overcome um, the um, they're not on earth because they hold it in the good. That type of information, they hold it in the good. They hold it in the gut like that. Accessibility, our country, they hold it in the gut where they've overcome the human need to use it against you or to um, disrupt it or to interfere with it like that or to block. They're above that. They're not on earth like that. They are the keepers of the Akashic records. That's the high priestess. That's the only high priestess. That's the one and only high priestess. Anybody else that's called themselves a high priestess and are human, they're telling a damn lie like that. They're telling a lie like that. Because the high priestess holds all of this information, the Akashic record, and, and would not use it for negative. Use it for good. Is the keeper, is holding it like that. Not to block anybody, not to tamper with stuff, not to get angry, not to do this, because like that. There are uh, uh, exaltation, exalted, held in glory. This is the message I'm getting now, present now, like that. Okay. Scorpio, the other water sign, is the keeper of secrets. Scorpio is out uh, the three water signs. It, Scorpio is a very powerful sign. Why? Because it, it has all the secrets. The dark secrets of the psychology. So it's going to be the psychology. It's not that just a water sign about feelings and all of that. It is the psychology of the human, knows human nature, can tap into your psychology. That's why a lot of people look at Scorpio as very powerful. They look at Scorpio as it's fits. They look at Scorpio as very um uh, uh, um, very deep sign. Scorpio is the sign that doesn't fear darkness. Why does it fear darkness? Because it's a sign that holds the secrets of the psychology of your psyche, of your mind. It holds the darkness. It knows the secrets. It knows the secrets that you're keeping, you try to hide. It knows what is lying beneath the surface of your thoughts, despite what you're saying. It knows your darker actions, past life and this lifetime. It knows your darker thoughts, past life and this lifetime. That's what Scorpio holds. Is the secret keeper, is the shaman like that. Is where all that darkness is held and Scorpio has access, access to it. That's why people call Scorpio a very psychic sign. I have Mars, Mercury, Venus and Scorpio. I don't call psychic. I'm not psychic. I don't know what other Scorpios feel. Scorpio is a, I'm going to say, Terry's sun sign with Pisces in the ninth house. Neptune is a Terry's trying to ascend it like that. So Mercury is Scorpio six time to ascend it also like that. So it will be very psychic. Those of you with Scorpio, I don't know how you all relate to Scorpio. Those of you Pisces, you're listening. What are you thinking? Now, so it has all the, it can tap in. It just comes to the Scorpio. They don't have to ask you any questions. They don't have to be looking for it. It just comes. It just comes like that. It's like walking past somebody, walking past them, somebody you never met on the street, and then you get past them like that. You take four steps. All their energy comes back to the Scorpio like that. Okay. You know, their thoughts, their feelings about whatever like that. Their darkness, their actions. Their mind, their mental state, their psychology, like that. The psychology of the person, the depth of the person, the reason for being regarding your soul contract and what you're coming to heal, release, like that, transform, transmute, and rise above, like that. That comes. A lot of people don't admit that with their mouth, because a lot of people, they're more in, in alignment with playing the goody, 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 goody on the surface. Scorpio knows that, no, dear. No, there's more to the story than not like that. 
it's like having a conversation with somebody about whatever, and then all this stuff comes to you, no matter how they're trying to act or present themselves as being. Scorpio knows his own psychology, the devil, his own mind, his own past lives, his own darkness. You can't be an eight house placement to be scared of the dark, because that's what keeps the um, an aspect of the Akashic records as it relates to where healing, growing, and evolution. Our soul contracts is held down, it's pulled from the eighth house. That's what's going to be transmuted like that into light. That's where the light is going to be shined, transformation. The psychology is being transformed of the soul. I don't know the reason why the transformation of these things are happening, but that's what it is. Um, Scorpio, that water sign have a hidden occult knowledge. Is the shaman obviously we have it? Not that it read and sought out. It's inside of the Scorpio. Is where the universe hid the occult knowledge inside of the Scorpio. Is the carrier of that Pluto darkness. Scorpio has that. Just like Pisces is holding the Akashic records. All lifetimes, the consciousness, the subconsciousness, the all aspects of the consciousness, like that. That's what Pisces is holding with the Akashic record. The energy. The energy, not the people. The energy, like that. Now, that's where the on one high priestess, energy, in the higher realms, is holding the Akashic records. They're in the higher realms, like that. That, not a you, a human, but you know the first thing you do if you had access to somebody's stuff is try to block them, get mad at them, do that. Not that. You're not a high priestess. Just because you can use tarot cards and tell people stuff and have some type of connection, you're still not a high priestess. There's only one high priestess. There's an energetic energy. This is what I'm getting at this moment. It's a high priestess and it's holding the Akashic record like that. And it is all good. The energy, the high priestess energy. Like that. The energy is all good. It's the book of all things. What is to come? What has been? What will be? Whether or not this energy has been human, I don't know. But there's, that's the energy. That's a high priestess. Now... Rest of you can call yourself what you want to call yourself. Now, but that's what I'm just getting about a high priestess. Now, Scorpio, the energy. I'm talking about the energy, the Scorpionic. There's an energy. <laughs> Obviously, as humans, what our purpose, our path, our purpose, our mission is we'll be we'll embody those energetic vibrations like that. Obviously, and that would be obvious to people. Like that. So, and we're connected to those energies. Like that. Because of well, whatever purpose, prop, purpose, like that. Or, or in, in whatever your astrological sign is, the optimum of how you're connected depends on your incarnations, how many lifetimes, where you are in your healing, who you are as a soul. The optimum, like that. You understand what I'm saying? We obviously know that all Pisces aren't holding their Akasha record. Like that. Okay. But, that they're, they're connected to that energy. Now, the odd that they are as, as humans determines how connected they really are. Where they are in their walk, those types of things. What odd that they are, Pisces, what's us going on in their chart, all that, what their purpose is on Earth. Like that is what I'm getting. Now, there's an energy, a scorpionic energy in the high realms. This is the keeper of the darker secrets. Where we put, remember, cancer holds the past. That's the moon. Holds on to the past and doesn't want to let it go. Now, that's the past that is being taken like that. Scorpio holds all the darker secrets, all of the um, lower energy. That's why you come across Scorpio people. They can read you. Okay, they know your secret. They know your energy. But it depends, on the, the, it depends on the type of Scorpio and the accessibility they have how much they can read you to the extent that they can read you like that. Um, like that. Cause some Scorpios can be, it depends on whatever else they have on their chart like that. And what type of optimal Scorpio it is. So the Scorpio would be the Scorpio, the energy in the ethers that you would be connected to if you're a Scorpio and, and the, the, the depth of your accessibility, just like the high priestess in the ether, you're connected to that energy. 
the depth and, and your preconception be, depends on your amount of lifetimes, your incarnations, what you came on earth to do, who you are as a soul, what you evolved into. That's how much assets you will have like that. Your, um, uh, remember Saturn rules, um, Saturn is, is initiation. So it would be that. Now, so that energy holds all the darkest secrets of humanity. All the darkness. That's why they say Scorpio people don't fear darkness of their own psychology. And they know the darkness of others. No matter how much the person is smiling and grinning like that and trying to be sweet, they can see beneath the mask like that. And sometimes they can see it without you even talking to them like that. Okay, this energy in the higher realms is that in total like that. That in total corresponding to your soul's growth and evolution, your soul contract. It has all the secrets of humanity. The darkness was good. It, it holds everything that's going to be destined to be transmuted, transformed, um, um, going into the ashes, burnt away, and you being rebirthed from that. Like that. It holds all that for everybody's um, soul contract. This energy does. Cancer is the youngest. It holds memory. It wants to hold on to memory. It's the moon. Like that is the moon. It changes constantly. Like is from one minute to the next. Cause the moon is like it moves like the tides of the ocean. Like that. So every day within the day, the feelings could fluctuate and be all over the place. That's cancer. Like that. It holds memory. Out of the three. Like that. Differently than Pisces, the energy holding con Pisces holds consciousness. Cancer holds memory. It's associated with the past. Past memories, all that. Okay. Uh, and not wanting to let it go is the crap. That's how the, that's the difference between the three water signs. So the moon would be that energetic body. Like there's a high priestess in the higher realms holding the Akasha records, Pisces holding consciousness, you know, and then it is Scorpio is holding all the energy that is supposed to be transmuted, transmutated, what you're rising from, what you're releasing, the psychology. Your psychology that holds you to it, your emotions that hold you to it, the death, like that, the psychic surgery that is happening. That's your soul contract. Okay, and then there's an energetic body, the moon that holds memory. Like that. <laughs> Meaning that, the, I guess we can make cancer seem important. This is why I would think it would be important as ways the souls go to evolution. I guess... Your fluctuating emotions throughout the day is, is associated with maybe um, from one moment to the next. I guess it would be associated with, I guess, what caused it to be like that would be some type of memory or something. Something that you need to let go of and release. Okay, that's how the three water signs work. The energy. Now it's ready to souls go through evolution. So this the light, there's some light that's coming through. Some of you are going to start, you're going to go into the energy of relief if you're not already in it. A weight being lifted, relief, relief, like that. Something could come in that cause you to feel that way. Or it's just, and also just the relief of the energy. Relief that something is completed, like that. And it brings you relief. Got like that. You come out of that tunnel, you come into the light energy is what I'm getting with this. So also there could be what we have with the astrology is that the most important thing we have coming up next is um, the most important thing that we have coming up next is on the third we have Jupiter that's going to go retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Prepare for that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in depth and what it means for each of the signs, but I'm going to make a different podcast regarding that. 
That's on the third, September third, if I'm not mistaken. Jupiter is going to go retrograde in the second house of Taurus, so that's going to be very important because it's going to be retrograde in the second house. Now, so also what we have, this is what I want to talk about, but we got off subject. At the Virgo, we have a Virgo. We have the, the Mercury is going to go direct on the fifteenth of September, leaving Virgo. This is important for Virgo rising sign, Virgo sun sign, um, Virgo moon sign. Now, it would be in for us collectively, but most definitely for them, for uh, because Mercury is in Virgo retrograde, is in their sign retrograde. Okay, it is their ruler that's retrograde, and also. Um, their opposite side, Pisces has Saturn there. Their opposite side, Pisces, we just had a full moon there. So it's very important for Virgos here. For us as a collective, but for Virgos also. Now, on on the 14th, September 14th, the new moon. Now, new moons, you can't Google new moon or be with beginner astrology and say, well, new moon is when we overtly make plans for the future, we are overtly, just like with healing, you can't say, I'm overtly doing this, because you're not in alignment with the energy, okay, so I'm not talking about that, you can overtly do what you want to do, but that's not what I'm talking about, this is what's going to happen with the new moon, but, and also, what, what is making the energy, what makes the energy different is these other energetic bodies coming in because of the time and space that we're in and astrologically energetically they come in and make their presence known and this is happening also because it so it kind of gives a potency or a different aspect or it can shift the energy but everything most definitely um prearranged predestined most definitely orchestrated like that now so now it would be with Virgo, and for the collective, but with Virgo also, this is the message that I got this morning, so I don't know who I'm talking to or what I'm talking about. New Moon, you're going to get to do something differently. Now, this is also the message I'm getting, because remember, Mercury rules Virgo. Mercury goes retrograde a, a, a lot throughout the years. There's a reason behind that. You're, you're getting to clean up the past throughout your incarnation. That's what you've been getting to do, right? That because Mercury is always retrograde. Now, differently than Gemini, we're talking about Virgo is more practical, proactive. So is you're getting to do, and, and I know what the new moon is about doing the new. I'm not talking about that lipstick beginner astrology. I'm talking about how the energies line up and what that makes and creates. Virgo, sun, moon, rising, and us as a collective to a lesser extent. Getting to do something differently. The new moon will kick that off for you all. So you are going to be getting a second chance at something. Now, you get to do it differently. So something is going to be awarded to you. But this is the part. You get to do it differently. That means don't do it like you did it before. Okay, that's what the understanding is. Okay, like that. And not because of whatever, whatever, whatever. It's because you don't need to do it like you did it before. The way you did it before was wrong like that. That's what it is. That's what it means. Now, so you get to do something differently, not with the same approach, not thinking the way you do it this time is you're going to get different results. No, you get to do it differently because you're going to do it differently. Okay, like that. That's the, and that needs to be um, really written down or written on the wall for somebody because the universe wants to make that known to you. Not because now the people are going to be, or the person, or whatever we're talking about, now they've changed. No, no, it's you. You get to do it differently. You have to do it differently, and you get the opportunity to do it differently. I'm also getting that you don't deserve this opportunity to do it differently. It's not because you deserve it. So some of you, you're getting something that you don't deserve. You're getting the opportunity to do something differently. You don't really deserve the opportunity. It could be a wish granted that you get the opportunity. It could be um, where it's, it's something. It could be a blessing that you get the opportunity. You don't deserve the opportunity. 
It could be you did something good in a past life, so you get the opportunity, or you did something good in, in this lifetime and you get the opportunity. The operative um, phrase here is that you don't deserve the opportunity and you get to do it differently. Not the same you did it before and think of what this time is going to work. It's not. Is you get to do it completely differently. You have to do it completely differently. The way you were doing it was wrong. That's why it didn't work. Okay. Now it's like you get to do it differently. The, 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 the blessing is you get the opportunity to do it differently. The universe really wants you to pay emphasis to that differently part. And you doing it differently like that. Okay. That's what it is. And you don't deserve to get to do it. Now is what I'm getting. So there's somebody you all need to think for this. Now. And some of you, it could be a Pisces, or it could be this Piscean energy. It could be a Pisces could be in your life. You get to do it differently. You could thank them, even if they don't know what's going on, their energy like that. Or is the energy allowing you, it could be your caution records or something with Pisces, and that's your opposite sign. You get to do it differently. You could thank them like that. Okay. Uh, like that. So now is what I'm getting with this. I'm also getting that somebody has SSD and some everybody's dark secrets like that and knows it, but is it could be the secret is gonna the secrets are gonna be safely kept. I was like, hell, why not the opportunities here? Why don't I just tap it in? Okay, that's what it was. Okay, everyone, until next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.